In this video, we will explore whether a residential solar panel installation in the UK needs to be fitted with an export meter. Now, the solar installation you see here follows a well-established norm that you'll see on most residential UK solar installations. An isolator on the AC side, followed by a generation meter feeding the inverter and a DC isolator connected to the PV strings. And we've looked at that in a separate video. Now, this arrangement worked well in the first solar boom when the government paid a very generous fit or feed-in tariff for early adopters of a solar technology. Now, the term feed-in was a little misleading as the actual payment was for the amount of energy generated rather than what was exported back to the grid. For the installation owner to receive payment, they must have an MID meter installed. The term MID stands for Measurement Instrument Directive, and it's a regulation that indicates that the meter is highly accurate in recording the amount of power used and can be trusted for billing purposes. Now, the days of the fit tariff are long gone as the cost of solar technology has fallen and adoption of solar these days is driven by high energy prices rather than government grants. So where does this leave the generation meter? Homeowners can receive payment for exporting surplus power to the grid. However, nowadays a smart meter at the origin of the installation accurately measures the exported energy and the data is typically transmitted automatically to the energy provider so they can sort the billing side out. Unless you're like me who had a smart meter fitted three years ago and it's never worked. But that's a sore point and perhaps the subject of another video that is coming very soon. If you're interested in smart tariffs and energy trading, then check out this video linked in the description. But for now, let's refocus on our mission. The recently updated IET Code of Practice for Grid-Connected Solar Photovoltaic Systems contains some guidance on system monitoring in Section 12. It states PV system monitoring is desirable because it allows the system owner and the installer to review the generation and performance of a system and to pick up any potential problems, PV monitoring systems make use of a variety of inputs and sensors to keep track of key parameters, and the information can be displayed on a variety of different devices, either locally or remotely online. Without any form of monitoring, metering or displays is very difficult to tell if a grid PV system is operational. All grid-connected PV systems shall be fitted with a minimum a readily accessible device to display and record the energy generation kilowatt hours of the system. It's also good practice to install a means to view instantaneous output of the PV system. So let's unpack that a little. Yes, it's a good idea to fit some form of monitoring so the user knows the system is working. And we know that because we have a colleague here at eFix who has one of these SunSync inverters fitted and he likes to check on the performance at least 10 times a day. All of the performance information is available in the app or the LCD screen of the inverter. However, beware if you encounter him on the street because he'll willingly dedicate half an hour, perhaps a little one-to-one -one session regaling you of the current performance of his system. In our opinion, the integral display on the inverter and the connected app satisfies the best practices contained within the code of practice. This dumb MID meter only provides a measure of total generation. It requires manual reading, so in my opinion, it doesn't represent best practice and provides very little useful information to the customer. Of course, you can get more advanced MID meters with communication, which enables more data capture, but there's still a duplication of the information that's available directly from the inverter, and it certainly doesn't give the granular detail on the actual solar array performance, and with more systems being integrated with batteries, export power only gives you part of the energy story. Code of Practice continues on the subject of generation and export monitoring in section 12.2.2. Previous feed-in tariff or fit agreements and smart export guarantees require an off-gem or mid-approved generation meter from which readings are taken and provided to the fit or seg provider. This meter can be provided 
and installed by the system installer. In other words, if you're working on an older installation still paid under the old fit tariffs, then you should fit a mid approved meter. It's unlikely you're unable to satisfy the requirement with the inverter's own measurements. Installers will often tell us the MCS standard requires a generation meter fitting. So let's take a closer look at the latest MCS solar installation standard. Again, I'll leave a link in the description to the full standard using the recently published version 5.0, which again cross references the IET code of practice under section 5.7 metering and communication we find 5.7.1 a means of recording and displaying the total AC generation of the system shall be installed. The standard goes on 5.7.2 if required for billing or payment purposes the means of recording the AC generation of the system shall be a meter approved under the European Measuring Instruments Directive MID showing the serial number on the front panel where it could be photographed alongside the make and model and meter reading. Note, installation of an MID would satisfy clause 5.7.1. And finally, 5.7.3, the means of recording AC generation, be it a dedicated meter or otherwise, should be accessible and readable by the customer without requiring the use of a tool, ladder, or torch. Interesting there, because even with this, if it was in a dark place, you would still need a torch. But essentially, the MCS guide is a reflection of what's been said in the IET code of practice. In other words, you have to provide a way of recording and displaying the generated power. If the data is required for payment, then it needs to be an MID class meter and the data should be easily accessible. Now, it does also say a dedicated meter or otherwise. A suggestion here that other means to record the generation is acceptable. This could be an online or app-based portal if the inverter is located in a difficult to reach place. And certainly if you can't read the screen, that app could be useful. Separate MID meeting is rarely required as readings for billing purposes are obtained from the installation smart meter. Therefore, we believe that for most installations, it is no longer necessary to install a dedicated generation meter like this one. But let us know your opinion in the comments. Do you agree or disagree? Will you still be fitting a generation meter like this one? Now, we also receive inquiries whether it is possible to add a battery storage to an older solar PV system that benefits from the feed-in tariff. Well, in this video here, we will showcase an installation that has successfully accomplished just that.